Okay, so solving quadratic equations by factoring. All right, so in this lesson, we actually learn how to solve equations as opposed to just simply factor them. So if you notice, in this first equation, it says solve the equation for x, as we want to find the value of x that makes this equation true. So in this equation, what we have is 2x times, where well, there's no sign between the 2x in parentheses, so that implies that there's multiplication happening. So it's 2x times x plus 1. There's no sign between here, between this parenthesis and the next, so it also implies multiplication. So this is a product of this one and this last one. So all these will be multiplied together. So basically what we're looking for is what numbers for x could we plug in to make this equation equal to 0. You make a look at this and tell what numbers make this equation 0. But essentially what we're looking for is this. If this piece goes to become 0, essentially we have 0 times some number times some other number. Well, 0 times any number we know equals to 0. So essentially, if either one of these products, either one of these factors um, gives you 0 or equals to 0, then the equation has to be 0. So again, if either one of the, if either of the factors equal to 0, I guess I should write that down. It's kind of important. If either of the factors if either of the factors equal to zero, then the equation equal, is equal to zero. So basically what that means is this. I'll take this factor and that factor and the third factor, and I'll figure out which, what number for x make each other factor zero. So we make up three small equations. Set 2x, I'm set it equal to zero. x plus 1, set it equal to zero. 2x track 3, and set it equal to zero. So one equation is 2x equals zero. Another equation is x subtract plus 1 equals 0. And the last one is 2x subtract 3 equals 0. So if either one of those became 0, it would, it would work for us. So if 2x equals 0, it's pretty straightforward. You pretty much know what x is. x got to be 0. But the reason why it works is you divide both sides by 2. So x equals 0 is one of my solutions. X plus 1, I want to solve that for x, subtract 1. x equals a negative 1. Here, I'm going to add 3 and then divide by 2. So add 3, you get 2x equals a 3, and then you divide that by 2. So x equals to 1.5, or you might say 3 over 2. So if x with either one of those numbers, I should get 0. So let's check it. Let's take 0 and plug it in for all the x's. So if that's the case, I would get, in this equation, was 2x times x plus 1 times 2x track 3. This is my check. Um, by plugging in 0 for all the x's, 2 times 0 times 0 plus 1 times 2 times 0, subtract 3. Well, 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 times 0, subtract 3, is negative 3. So you ask yourself, what is 0 times 1 times negative 3? Well, that's definitely 0. So that worked. And under the same school of thought, by plugging in negative 1 here, you get negative 1 plus 1 which is 0. So you get 0 times, this would be negative 2, and this would be negative 5. You plug in negative 1. 0 times negative 5 and negative 2 is still 0. So it also works. That same school thought goes to the 1.5. You plug it in, you should get 0 as this factor, making the whole equation equal to 0. So that's pretty easy when it's already factored like that. So to give it to you in factored form, pretty straightforward set each factor equal to zero. So that's what you do. You set each factor equal to zero. Let's try another one. Let's take a look at this equation and solve it for x. So pause the video and try it on your own. Probably remember, our last rule was set each factor equal to zero. This is a factor, that's a factor. So x plus 2 has equal 0. x track 3 has equal 0. So when I set it equal to 0 and solve that little equation, subtract 2, subtract 2, 
x must be negative 2. This equation, I, equation I add 3 and add 3, x equals to 3. So my solution has to be negative 2 or 3, and those are the solutions. I could check them to see, but that's what they are. All right, let's do a different one. Solve this equation for 0. Oh, I'm sorry, solve this equation for x. So you notice it looked different from my last ones, right? And our last ones, they're factored already. This one is not factored. So you should look at this. You should say, can I factor this? Is this something that I can factor? So you may be looking at it saying, well, can I find two numbers, multiply together to be 5? Actually, I miswrote this. This should be a plus sign. So anyway, can I find two numbers, multiply together to be 5, and add together to be 6, right? So you use the x method. Look for 1 multiplied to be 5, add to be 6. It's pretty straightforward, 5 and 1. So your factors are x plus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0. So now it's just like our last example, and the question is what makes each of those factors equal to 0? So just like our last example, set each factor equal to 0. So x plus 5 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. And you might recognize our solution is this one x has to be negative 5. And this one, x has to equal to negative 1. I skipped the step, but I'm sure you recognize I must have subtracted 5 from here, subtracted 1 from there. And I came up with those solutions. So those are the solutions to it. If I check it out, I should plug in negative 5 here to see if it works. Or I could plug in negative 1 there to see if it worked. Just to make sure, let's check it. So I plug in negative 5 to problem. So negative 5 squared plus 6 times negative 5 plus 5 does it equal to 0. So negative 5 squared is positive 25. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30 plus 5. So I'm going to add the positive ones. 5 and 25 is 30. Subtract 30. It's definitely 0 equals 0. Definitely worked. Negative 5 work, if you check 1, it should work too. So that's how I can solve it by factoring. I mean, I would just factor it and then set the factors equal to 0. So the rules are factor it, and then afterwards, say each factor. equal to zero. Step one, step two. Factor it and then say each factor equal to zero. And that's how you solve a polynomial equation. All right, so and this is just solve for x. And if you notice that one side isn't equal to zero, before we can begin solving, one side must be equal to zero. All right, so one side of the equation must be equal to zero in order to solve a quadratic. So that would be the first step. Make sure one side equal to zero. And then you factor it. And then you set the factors equal to zero. So in this case, you notice that one side isn't equal to zero. Left side is this. Right side is negative 9x. So you have to get one side to be zero. Choose a side. It doesn't really matter which side you choose, as long as one side equal to zero. Um, you probably think to move the one with the fewer terms over. So I'm going to do it that way. Add 9x to both sides. It doesn't have anything to line up with because you have any like terms here. So we're going to have negative 3x cubed. The 6x squared does not add with this. It just comes down. And 9x has nothing to add with either, so it just comes down. Negative 9x plus 9x is 0 which is exactly what you want to see before you begin. So now the question is, can you factor this? Is this something that you can factor? You should be able to, you should recognize that there is a GCF. And GCF, in this case, is negative 3x. After you factor out a negative 3x, you should wind up seeing that this piece reduces. So divide this piece by negative 3x. Divide the second piece by negative 3x. 
divide the last piece by negative 3x. And that will give me, this leaves you simply the negative threes cancel, and x cubed over x gives you x squared. Negative six over negative three, this cancels to be a negative two. x squared over x gives you just x, so negative two x. And this reduces the x's canceled out, leave you not over negative three, which is negative three. So now the question is, can you factor this trinomial? You should be able to factor it. That trinomial, you ask what multiplies to be negative 3 and that to be negative 2. It's x subtract 3, x plus 1. And that has equal to 0. So you set each factor equal to 0. One factor is negative 3x. Another factor is x subtract 3. So that equals zero. Another factor is x plus one. So in the first one, you divide by negative three. X equals zero. In the second one, you add three. And x equals a three. And the last one, x has to be negative one. So the factors are zero, three, and negative one. So that's it. That's what the factors are, and that's how you find the solutions to a quadratic equation um, by factoring them. Another way you can find the solutions to a quadratic equation is by looking at its graph. All right, we know what a graph quadratic looks like. It looks like this parabola. And where we can find our solutions is they're going to be right here and here. That x-intercepts. Uh, x-intercepts, also called solutions, is where the y value is 0. So you look at x values and make the y value 0. So these are your solutions. One solution is x equals a negative 1. Another solution is x equals a 2. And those are the solutions to quadratic. The quadratic might not have any solutions at all. If you don't have any solutions at all, it just means the graph didn't touch the axis. So if I want to create a quadratic that didn't have any solutions, it would look like this. It doesn't have any real solutions because it never crosses the x-axis. So it has no solutions. This one has two solutions. Because it touched x-axis twice. You got some with one solution. It would look like this. It would come down, just barely touch the x-axis, just tap it. We would say in geometry, it's tangent to the x-axis at this point. It never goes down through it again. It just has one solution. So you can figure out what the, what the solutions are just by looking at its graph. And that's all I have.